Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And many of you could possibly identify here, but the Bible says that the Lord did not answer her. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But when he answered, he answered and said, I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she replied and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And you talking about getting Jesus' attention. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. For a subject matter today, I want to preach to you from this subject. When the desperate come to God. When the desperate come to God. And by way of title, I want to title this and propose to you the question, why don't you cross the line? Why don't you cross the line? Amen. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the spirit that we feel in this place. God, I pray in Jesus' name, and we thank you, God, today for your word that's anointed, that's forevermore settled, God. And, Lord, I ask you, Lord, as you anoint me, God, as your messenger of clay, Lord, allow your word to become alive and real and tangible. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you allow your word this morning, God, to coincide between the pulpit and the pew. Lord, the gift of faith that you've placed in this place, God. Um, Lord, upon the hearers and upon the soil, Lord, of, of your word today, God, that it not lie dormant, but it be activated, that it be cultivated, Lord. Uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, begin to move us, Lord, to the next place that you have in store for us. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Put your hands together one more time as you're being seated. In the house of the Lord. When the desperate come to God. Amen. The Bible says, compared to God's righteousness, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. In, other, in another connotation, uh, the Bible says that God heareth not a sinner's prayer. And sin is unrighteousness. Amen. So except we repent, we'll surely likewise perish. And unless we, we repent, we cannot obtain his righteousness. Amen. Yet the scripture says that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. So here today I'm standing. I want to, to have my prayers answered. I want to have my, my prayers availeth much with God. Amen. And in order for that to happen, I need to be righteous. And the Bible says that compared to God's righteousness, that I'm filthy rags in the sight of God. So consequently this morning, the only way that I can obtain righteousness is for God to put his righteousness inside of me. Amen. And the Bible says... That Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him as righteousness. 
Amen. So can I tell you this morning that there's times in our life where God will create circumstances. Amen. God will create situations where we are put in a place where we have no other choice, amen, but to believe him. If you will, he calls us to cross the line in our faith and believe him for the impossibility. He calls us to cross the line and believe him for the miraculous. And when we cross the line, he imputes his righteousness inside of us, and it comes on us as righteousness. And God says, all right, you've got me exactly where you want me. I'm all ears. I want you to come on, righteousness. Amen. You've got me at my word. And the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. You see, it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the will and the desire that you have this morning, amen, the will and the desire that you've come into this place this morning. Now, it may have been set in dormant. It may have just been there for quite some time, amen, but I want you to know that that will is not yours. That will belongs to God. And the Bible says that it, it's God that worketh in us both to will and to do, amen, for his good pleasure, amen. And God brings the will and the to do together for faith to be manifest, amen. That's why we feel like sometimes that our will, our desires in God takes us down a road, takes us to a place where we have no choice but to believe God, and when we believe God, God calls us, amen, to cross the line, if you will. And when he calls us to cross the line, he does the to-do part. And the Bible says that it works together, amen, for his good pleasure. Amen. I had the privilege sometime back several years ago, amen, uh, to, to minister in the country of El Salvador. And it was a, a, a privilege and an opportunity. And I had been praying uh, for God to allow me to see the supernatural. The very things that I had heard about, the very things that I had read about, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to see it. I wanted to experience it. There was a hunger that was inside of me. And so the idea was to come to the country and, and to meet the ministry, uh, preach several times in local churches, and, and then come back for a second trip, hey man, to minister in a crusade that they were planning. And during my first trip, little more than halfway in, I believe I ate some, some fruit that had been washed in water. And somehow or another, I got the water in my system, and my system wasn't accustomed to the water. And I got very, very sick, like I had never been sick before. And I felt, I felt faint that would, would not go away, and I broke out in cold sweats and and one of the precious elders come up to me and he patted me on the, the shoulder and, and he said, uh, he said, the devil don't want you to come back. And I thought to myself, well, if I ever get to feeling better, don't worry about that <laughs> because I'm not coming back. <laughs> Amen. But I remember one particular night kneeling down beside the bed and I cried out to God and God give me as though it was a, a faith beyond what I had believed before. And, and I began to pray, God, you're a healer. God, I need you to touch my body. God, I'm leaving this place tomorrow. And, and God, I need to be able to, to make it down, hey amen, through customs. And I need to be able to get a plane. And I'm, I've got a long trip back. I need you, God. And I laid down, and I want you to know about an hour of time went by, and I felt the presence of God come on me in a supernatural way. I began to feel God miraculously touch me in a supernatural way. I woke up the next morning feeling faith in my spirit. I felt faith. I looked at the, I looked at the devil that morning in prayer, and I said, Devil, don't worry. I am coming back. 
I want you to know that three months later, amen, in the course of a two-night crusade, amen, I saw God greatly and mightily, amen, move in a miraculous way. Amen, I saw God move in, amen, and begin to touch people's bodies. Amen, I seen the miraculous. Amen, I seen God, amen, greatly pour out his spirit. And there was many people, amen, that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? How? Because God created a circumstance circumstance because God created a situation for faith to be manifest. Praise God. And I believe this morning that I am preaching here today to some people. I mean, God has put some desires inside of you. I mean, God has put some will inside of you. I mean, it may have been when you first got the Holy Ghost. I mean, it could have been three years or four years or five years ago. I mean, but it's been lying dormant. It's been the will. It's been the purpose of God. I mean, that's been put inside of you. And you're beginning sometimes to claim ownership to it, wondering if it's ever going to go away. Amen. And wondering if it's ever going to happen. Wondering if it was just a, a, a dream or just a fairy tale. But I want you to know, amen, that the same God that willed it is the same God that's able to bring it to pass. And the same God that's here this morning that willed things inside of you is the same God that's putting faith inside of you. That's wanting to take you to the next place. That's wanting to take you to the next level. Amen. And the Bible says it works together. For his good pleasure. Say that with me. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. There was a friend of mine that we did Bible studies in college. And he wanted a Bible study. His name was David. And we taught a Bible study. And David wanted the Holy Ghost. He desired the Spirit of God. But he always was, was asking questions, and he says, you know, well, well what, if, what if it's me that's doing it? And, and, and I want it to be God that's doing it whenever I experience God. And hunger began to grip his heart. And there was a trip that was coming up, and David and I was going to go on this trip. And, and all during this, this trip on a Friday and Saturday, David was saying, can we talk about those scriptures again? Can, can we rehearse all of the examples all over again? He said, I, I want to have it in my mind. I want to have it in my spirit. When we go to church on, on Sunday, I, I, I want to I be able to feel everything that we're talking about. And, and so we've done that. And there was a hunger that was inside of David. And I began to watch as we entered service that Sunday, the Spirit of God began to move upon him. He began to weep and he began to cry. I want you to know before the, the minister even had an opportunity, amen, to give an altar call. Amen. David made it about halfway down. Amen. The altar. Amen. And he began to raise his hands and he began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them to utterance. I've come today to preach to you. What is it in this house that you want? If you've never been filled today, Amen. With the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If the Spirit of God has never touched you, maybe you may be in the place that David was. You're analyzing. I don't want to take ownership to it, but I tell you today, there's something that takes place. Amen. When the when the desperate come to God, amen, something begins to break. Amen. Something begins to take place in the Spirit. And before this service is over, amen, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If you believe that, put your hands together and praise the Lord. I believe I'm preaching to some people here today that's been contemplating. I, I see it in the scriptures. I, I know I'm probably needing to get baptized, but I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering if, if when I'm going to do it. Uh, amen. Today's your day. I ask you today, why don't you just cross the line? Why don't you just make up a conscientious decision? Uh, amen. That for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, amen. Salvation. Is for today. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't you cross the line and watch God do the to-do part? Amen. In our text this morning, Jesus escapes the scene of the press crowd. And he withdraws from the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that proved themselves enemies of Jesus' teaching. 
And the Bible says that Jesus chose to go to a place off the beaten path. He chose to go to a place called Tyre and Sidon. And understand up to this point that Jesus' public ministry was somewhat semi-confined to the nation of Israel. Amen. It was to the Jew only. But this trip that Jesus takes is the only recorded trip that he ever took as an adult outside of Palestine. So here in this scripture text that we're reading this morning, we've got to understand that Jesus breaks protocol. And he heads to Tyre and Sidon with his disciples. And I believe that when he heads to Tyre and Sidon with his disciples, he's looking for something. I believe that he was looking for something in particular. I believe he was somewhat frustrated that what he was looking for, that what he was wanting and what he was desiring, he did not find it among his own. Because we find in Matthew chapter 11 verse 21, Jesus pins these words and he says, Woe to you, Chorazin, and woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the ministry, for if the miracle that was performed in you had have been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So there was something inside of our Lord Jesus Christ that was wanting to draw. He was wanting to see. Amen. So he heads to Tyre and Sidon looking for something in particular. And Jesus is the master at multitasking. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ can do many things at the same time. So here in our text this morning, Jesus sets the stage to take his disciples to school. He gets them to themselves in a house at Tyre and Sidon. And he says, get ready, boys, because I'm getting ready to take you to school. Meanwhile, Jesus is putting some desire, he's putting some will in this Canaanite woman for her daughter to be healed that's been grievously vexed with the devil. And so this Canaanite woman, this desire, gets her to a place to where she gets word that Jesus is at Tyre at Sidon. And she has to do a whole lot of research to even know that he's there because he's in a somewhat hidden place. But when she finds him, the Bible said she cries out to him, Lord Jesus, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. This desire is is hollering out. And the Bible said that Jesus answers her not a word. You know, sometimes God can visit us and put desires inside of us. He, he can put some dreams and he can put aspirations inside of us. And it seems like that right after he does it, he goes right to the sideline. And it seems like he's a million miles away. And it seems like his, his voice is, is so distant from us. And, and, and we're reaching out to him and we're feeling this unction and we're feeling this desire. But, but all along, we're feeling like he's not around. And so Jesus answers her not a word. But not only that, his disciples is trying to discourage her. They come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, why don't you just send her away? Just get her to go on down the road because she's, she's bugging us. She's bothering us. They didn't understand they was in class. And when Jesus answers her, he answers her with an answer that she don't want. Anybody ever been there? 
God, you willed something in me. God, you put some desires in me, and, and I've not heard from you for a long time. And, and now that I'm hearing from you, you're telling me something that seems to be completely opposite of what I'm looking for. And he says, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, what he was saying to her is, it's not for your kind. What he was saying for her is, is it's not your time yet. More discouragement. But all along, Jesus is working behind the scene. Because she's not just going to sit there. She's not just going to let that will. She's not just going to let that desire become dormant. And the Bible said somehow, some way, either she made it closer to the, to the house and made her way in, or somehow, some way, she drew the master out because they were coming together. And the Bible said that, that, that she falls down even after being silenced, even after being discouraged. She falls down and she worships him. And she says, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. The Lord answers and he says, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to feed it to the dogs. She says, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. In other words, if I can, I know you're the bread of life. I know you're the answer. I'm not going to stop until I get the answer. I know you're the bread of life. But somehow, some way, if I can just get a little bit of a crumb, if I can get just a little bit of a crumb, I know that enough crumbs, hey amen, will make some bread. If I'll just stay right here, and if I'll persistently pursue you with importunity in asking, and I don't back down from silence, and I back, don't back down from insult, but I pursue the master. You talking about getting Jesus' attention. Jesus says, watch this, boys. Watch this, disciples. Jesus is saying, watch this, Pentecostals of Richmond. And the King of kings and the Lord of lords, amen, reaches into the future. He reaches in, amen, to time. And he grabs a hold of a miracle that wasn't supposed to happen. And the gift of faith was being manifest. And he grabs a hold of it. And he gets a hold of it. And he pulls it through the window of time. And the Bible says that he drops it at her feet. And he says, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Thy daughter is, grieved, is, is, is healed this very hour. I've come to preach to somebody today that it's time that your desires, amen, quit sitting on the sideline. It's time that your desires not be dormant. But God is here today, amen, to stir. God is here today to resurrect. Amen. God is here today to take some things that's grown strangely dim and bring it back to a reality all over again. I feel the gift of faith here today. Stand and put your hands together and praise the Lord. Where there's a gift of faith, anything can happen. Amen. I'm preaching to some dormant ministries. Amen. I'm preaching to some dormant ministries. Amen. I'm preaching amen, to some soul winners in the making. God's visited you. Amen. God showed it to you. Amen. But it's being laid dormant. But today, God. I feel him wanting to help me here today. I feel his angels want to encamp around this place today. Faith is building here today. What is it in this house that you need? What is it in this house that you've been believing God for? Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Let your voice out right now. Riko koko ho 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 sa ha 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 
God is building in this place. There's something that's getting ready to erupt. Amen. The gift of faith is getting ready to bring some things to pass. Amen. The gift of faith has been getting ready, amen, to bring some things to fruition. Amen. There's people here today that's been living below their privilege. Amen. But I'm here to tell you today that, to, that this day forward is going to be your greatest day in ministry. It's going to be your greatest day in your relationship with God. It's going to be the greatest day in seeing God bring fruits from your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Jesus gets his disciples together and he gets them in a boat and he gives them a word. At the same time, he gives them some desire. The same time God puts some desire inside of some of you, he gives you a word. That word may have grown strangely dim or you may have forgotten it, but it's still forevermore settled. Jesus told his disciples when they got in that boat, he said, let us go over to the other side. In other words, we're going to arrive at destination. We're going to arrive at where I am taking you. And the Bible said that, that Jesus, he makes him, himself down into the lower parts of the, the, the ship. And, and he's down there and he falls asleep. And the Bible says that a great storm comes. Great wind is blowing. Always between the desire and the to-do is going to be a storm. Between the desire and the to-do it's going to be great winds of adversity where the very foundation of who you are or who, and how you exist, your faith is going to be rattled and shaken. And the Bible said that this great storm comes and the Bible said that, that these men of God that was handpicked of God began to fear for their life. That ought to make you feel better. And they got beside themselves and, and somebody got the, the great idea that, hey, let's just go down there and, and let's wake up Jesus in the bottom of the boat. And hear what the Lord says. When he gets up, he talks to them about their faith. I'm preaching to some people here today that in the process between the, the, the desire and the to-do, I mean, the enemy and the storms of life and, and everything has tried to suppress your faith and hold you to a place to where you're handcuffed and you're restricted and, and your faith is not elevated to a place, amen, to believe God to bring the desires to pass. But when the master... Stepped up above board. He said, peace, be still. And he calmed the waters. I feel that peace here today. I feel faith arising. Amen. God is wanting to calm the storms. Amen. That's shaking you. Amen. In the process of what he's wanting to do in you and through you. And I hear him saying today, I rebuke the devourer. He's pushing back the devourer. Amen. For your sake. Amen. God is here today. Amen. Because he wants to bring some things to fruition. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. There is tremendous restoration here today. God is wanting to restore some things. Some things that we've lost in the course of serving him. Some things that we've lost in the, in the midst of battle. You know, we can become battle fatigue and, and somehow we can, we, can, we can keep our head above water, but in the midst of it, we can lose a little ground. We can lose a mo little momentum. I mean, our, 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 our tools become less sharpened. But today, God is wanting to restore. Restore today. Before the kings, it was the time of judges, and the first judge of Israel was Eli. And it was sin and compromise that caused Israel to be defeated. 
And there was something that took place. The Bible said that the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the glory of God, was stolen from Israel. Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were destroyed on the battlefield. And Israel is without the glory. The enemy during the process, because he fears what God is going to do when he brings your desire to pass, is always trying to strip and rob the glory of God out of your life. If he can get you to going through the motion with your head down, if he can get you just coming in and out of the house of God with your faith, amen, on, on reserve when it should be on, on full for fully equipped. If he can get you to live there, then he can, keep, he can keep everything that God's put inside of you suppressed and being lied dormant. But Israel lost the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible said that that Phineas's wife, who was pregnant with child at times, she says, I'm going to name this child Ichabod, which means the glory of God has been taken from Israel. During the process of God taking you from glory to glory, like we sung about, from faith to faith, the enemy's trying to birth an Ichabod in your life. He's trying to strip you from the glory of God. And something that stirs me, something that devastates me is the fact that, that when they leave the time of, of, of judges and they move into the time of kings, the first king of Israel was King Saul. And you can't find in scripture anywhere where Saul was moved because the ark was gone. As a matter of fact, Saul never inquires as to where the ark is. The enemy wants just to keep us going through the motion. God's done his part. He's put his will inside of us. He's put in his desire inside of us for his kingdom to come and for his will to be done. But there was something that took place from the departure of King Saul to the anointing of David. The Bible said that the very first thing that David did is he inquired as to where the ark was. And he said, you know what? It's not the will of God for Israel to be stripped of her glory. It's not the will of God for Israel, amen, to not have the Ark of the Covenant. That was God's desire. And he decides, amen, he's going to do something about it. I believe it was just not an ordinary faith, amen, but I believe it was a gift of faith that come upon David. And David said, I'm going to go to the house of Obadidim and I'm going to do whatever I have to do, amen, in order to see the glory of God. Amen. Return to Israel. And the Bible said that he, every six paces, he stopped and offered up praise and offered up worship to God. You know, sometimes getting back the very things that the enemy's taken is not always easy. But every six steps, he stopped and offered up praise. Every six steps, he stopped and offered up worship. And the Bible said that David single-handedly grabbed a hold, amen, of the Ark of the Covenant. And he returned turned it back to Israel. And when he did, the Bible said that all of Israel rejoiced. I'm preaching to somebody here today. God is on you. God's anointing is on you. And the kingdom of God is getting ready to shake. It's getting ready to rumble. Amen. The kingdom of God is getting ready to come to pass. It's getting ready to come to fruition because the desire that's inside of you is being awakened. It's being awakened in this service today. It's not going to lie dormant because the gift of faith is here today because the God we serve that's big enough to will it it's also the God that's big enough to do the to do part put your hands together and praise the Lord why don't you give him a standing ovation here this morning Musicians, help me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Raise your hands. Let's entertain what's here right now. Hakatama hoshi tamahasa tamahaya. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I challenge somebody in your mind to go back to that place in time where God touched you. Go back to that dream. Go back to that prayer meeting. When you come up off of your knees and you knew that God had deposited something in your spirit. God had put some desires inside of you. He had talked to you about a ministry. He had talked to you about doing something in particular. You stepped outside of the boat. And the circumstances hasn't been what you perceived them to be. What you anticipated them to be. But I've come with a word of God today to somebody to tell you that God's will and God's desire is still forevermore settled in heaven. He hasn't changed his mind. And that same God that willed it, he's here today to encourage your faith. Amen. To believe him. Amen. Maybe it wasn't supposed to happen the way you perceived it to happen. But can I tell you somebody, amen, today in the Holy Ghost, and I prophesy to you, just because it hasn't happened, or just because it hasn't happened the way you thought it would happen, doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. I'm reaching for somebody's purpose today. I'm reaching for some dreams and some aspirations that's deep in your spirit that visits you at, at times, but you have a way of passing it off and allowing it to become a little sedated. Jesus, it's okay if you want to start coming to this altar. Peter told Jesus told Peter, Peter, I have desires for you, Peter. Peter, I want to put some, I want to put some keys in your hands. As a matter of fact, Peter, my desire for you is I want you to preach the first message to my church that I died for. I want, to, I want you to preach the day of Pentecost, Peter. And by the way, Peter, I prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fail not. I prayed, I prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fail not. Because the only thing that can stop my desire, the only thing that can stop my will from coming to pass is that your faith fail. Peter, he's, he's feeling the desire in the beginning he's feeling faith really high in the beginning and he says I will I will be with you to the end Jesus Jesus tells Peter he says no Peter somewhere in the middle somewhere in the process between the will and the to do you're going to fail me that's where some people are living right now. God's wheeled some things inside of you, and you're feeling like, how could it ever happen? How could my dreams ever come to pass because, because I have failed him? I have failed him. Jesus goes looking for Peter. Peter, three denials. He denied knowing who the Lord was. When the Lord finds him, he proposes these questions. He says, Peter, lovest thou me? Not once, not twice, but three times. He says, Peter, lovest thou me? In other words, I want to give you restoration for each of your denial. And then he tells Peter, he says, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Peter, if you love me, I want you to feed my lambs. I, I want my will. I, I want my purpose. I, I want the desire that I put inside of you. I want it to come to pass. You love me, Peter. Have faith for the will and the to do to come together. Because you know what? And I prophesy to somebody here today in the Holy Ghost. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, I still got these keys I'm wanting to put in your hands, boy. 
I'm telling you, sir. I'm telling you, ma'am. God still wants to bring that desire past. He still wants to bring that purpose to pass in your life. Because the promises of God are forevermore settled in heaven. Amen. The promises of God are still real. Amen. The promises of God, amen, are still true. And I feel his faith here today. I feel him encamping around this place.